Okay. Literally five seconds has gone by and we're going to record the very next one and get into a little bit of the logic for the stand. So in the stand, we're going to get rid of all of this. We are going to set up playing the note and being able to be interacted with and all that. So very first thing we want to do. One, I'm going to select this capsule here and I'm going to make sure to rename it by pressing F2. I'm just going to call it capsule. And then both of these, we can just rename them to like base one and base there. That way we kind of have a differentiation on them. Um, with the capsule selected, I want to go to the materials here. If you can't see them, make sure to compile save. You'll get the material here for it. We want to find our M underscore color. Okay. We're going to compile save that again. We're going to switch the con construction script and we're going to pull our capsule out pull off of this and say create dynamic material instance okay and then with that we're going to get our source material which would be our m underscore color we're going to pull off of this and we're going to say promote the variable I'm going to name it DYN for dynamic and MAT for mat. There we go. And I'm going to pull off of this and we're going to say set vector parameter. Um, I'm going to go open up the color because we actually need to do something I forgot to do in the other video. We are going to first of all grab this, hit F2 so we can copy the name of it. And if you can't copy the name or, or if it looks more like uh, this, this guy here, make sure to just right click and convert to parameter and name it. All right, back in the stand, I'm going to paste this in. I'm going to right click on value. Also, don't close the color yet because we're about to change something in it. Promote this to variable. I'm going to change the name of that really fast to color. I'm going to make it instance editable. I'll save. And we're going to change it default to white with a alpha of one. Okay, save back in our color. We need to make this to where it can be emissive. And so in order to do that, what we can do is pull off of the color here and get a multiply or just hold M left click and get a multiply Go ahead and plug that into our emissive color here. And then I'm going to hold S and left click to get a scalar parameter. And I'm just going to call this intensity. Or you can say emissive intensity or whatever you want to do. And you'll notice with it being zero, we're not emissive at all. We go to one, a little bit emissive, five, very emissive, and then like 100, and it's the surface of the sun. So we're going to set the zero for right now. I'm going to apply and save. Okay, and then right now it's honestly all we have to do for the color so i'm going to close that go back to the stand and now we need to set it up to where it can be interacted with where's the center at there it is um i'm gonna go to class settings here we're gonna go to implemented interfaces drop it down and we're gonna get the interact interface and so that should give us an interface here. Now we want the on interact. We're going to get the actor. And we're going to find out, is this the player? And so we're going to ask, does implement interface? If it does implement interface, which we need to make sure is the uh, player interface. If it does implement that, then it's obviously the player because only the player is going to have that on it. Um, we also need to find out something which we don't have a variable for yet. So I'm just going to put a branch here in the meantime, and I'm, this will just be the uh, is players turn thing. And so if it's the player's turn, we will allow it to play a note. And honestly, we're actually going to be doing this a little bit different later on, too. But I'm going to help show you guys how to set this up just so that it's there. Um, so that we can test it. So now I'm going to make a new custom event and this will be play 
note. And so we want to get our capsule, or no, not the capsule, sorry. We want to get our dynamic material, and whenever we play a note, first thing we want to do is play a sound, which that's something else I forgot. In order to play a sound, we want to go to add here. We want to get audio. That'd be this first one here. Uh, one of the first things we want to do to it is we want to go to auto or search auto and find this auto activate, turn it off. Okay, and then we're going to pull this in and do something else that I forgot to do. So up here, we're going to do an event begin play. And on event begin play, we want to set the sound. And our sound will be a variable. We're going to hit promote to variable. And I'm just going to rename this to sound and also make that instance editable. Okay. Then we can take our audio and we can say play. And if you're like me, you're going to probably have some audio that's not all the same length. And so we're going to do something for that here in a second. So don't worry too much about it. But anyways, I'm going to grab the dynamic material here and we're going to say set scalar parameter. And remember, we named it intensity. So if you still have the M color open, you can go in there and just grab that from in there. I want to make sure that it copies over correctly. And then we're going to set this to whatever intensity we want. I'm going to go with like about 2.5, just so it's nice and bright. Um, and then we want to delay. And this will be for however long you want the note to be playing. So if you if you have a long note, but you only want it to play for one second, then just set it to one second here. I'm going to put mine to 0.65 because I know that works best for my sounds. Um, and then I'm going to turn all of this off. And actually, uh, something I want to do is actually make this. Make this a uh, function. Wait, why am I? Want, hold on. I made this a function in the prototype. But I don't remember why. Um, I could pull the prototype up really fast and just go look at that. Now, we'll just keep going. All right. Um, so we delay and then we want to turn it off. Um, so what we can do is grab our scalar parameter here. Set this to zero. And I also want to grab the audio and tell it to stop. And I'm actually going to put that in between the delay and the scalar parameter. So it's the first thing that happens. And honestly, that should be perfectly fine. We play the note, we set the intensity, we wait for half a second ish. We stop the audio and we turn the uh, emissive off. So whenever we interact, if this variable is true, it will play the note. It'll actually play it through the um, Simon will actually play the note and tell or tell us to play the note. We'll just tell it that we're interacting, but that's a thing for later. Right now, we're just going to test to make sure this works. And I'm actually going to copy this guy a couple of times. And we can also rotate it. I don't know why I rotated them around. They can pretty much go in any direction. But all right, so for this one, I'm going to go set this to like a bluish green actually let's make it more blue than green blue and we can go green i would suggest not going red on any of these just because that's kind of confusing so we'll do like a purple and a yellow just so that if these guys do turn red it's uh because they aired right now i'm going to hit Play. I'm going to walk up and I'm going to press F. And yeah, since we don't have sounds set up yet, they're not playing their sounds. Yeah, they're lighting up nicely. So let's go ahead and get the sound set up. But for this one, remember we had our sounds folder we set up in the other video. I'm going to grab. Yeah, my C, I think. Yeah, C is going to be the first one. 
and then remember we're also grabbing the Q because that has the attenuation attached to it and then D flat for this one and then E for this one and this last one I actually want to jump back to my B flat this is the highest note throw that oh whoops I didn't have it selected there we go and now we can test that Yeah, and you know, it's all about the same in length. So another material I actually forgot to make, we're, so we're gonna go ahead and make it now, is our M underscore overlay material. And basically what this is gonna do is whenever we look at it, it's going to let us know that we can interact with it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold three just to get a constant. I'm gonna set this to white. You guys can set it to whatever color you want. I think white's gonna work the best in this case. I'm going to hold T to get a texture sample. I'm going to grab some noise. I think that'll work perfectly fine. I'm going to multiply these two together so that whatever color you put in here will kind of color this guy. And then I'm going to hold P as in Paul to get a panner. Put that into our UVs and I'm just going to set the X to like 0 0.05 real slow. Plug this into our emissive color. And with this selected right here, I'm actually going to go over to our surface here. Uh, whoops, wrong thing. Our blend mode and set it to translucent and our shading model and set it to unlit. So for our translucency, we want to add uh, probably the R to opacity. And there's our nice kind of opaque cloudy surface if you wanted to you could maybe dull this down a little bit by taking the white and making it more of like a gray okay and now I want to go to the stand and remember we have our on interact and on look at um, so for our on look at I'm gonna double click on that to implement it if you know it's only going to be the player so i'm not going to worry about checking to see who this is i'm just going to um well one we're going to have a boolean here to check is it the player's turn if it's not we don't want this to light up we don't want them to be able to see that they can interact with it if they can't interact with it so i'm just going to put a branch here uh for right now and then we're going to get our capsule here it is <clears throat> sorry uh, set overlay material and we're gonna set that to our M overlay so select that in the browser and then you can shift this arrow and it'll pop it in there uh, we're gonna delay for 0.11 and I'll show you guys why that is here in a second oh and sorry it doesn't need to be a regular delay it needs to be a re-triggerable delay. Uh, the big difference really fast in these two is this one will always finish. It will always complete. Whereas a re-triggerable delay will only complete if the delay itself has completed. Um, I, that probably doesn't make sense. <laughs> so let's say that I have this function being called every 0.1 seconds. Um, if this delay hasn't been finished before this gets called again and starts passing through, it won't pass out of here. It'll just recycle this and restart this, uh, this delay. So basically it, it's kind of like a limiter in a way. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but I'm gonna set this to point one, one. And the reason for that is in the, um, player character, we're going to make it to where the look at event only happens every 0.1 second. So another 10th of a second later, this will finish. And if it, if the player is no longer looking at it, then we will be setting the material. So I'll copy paste this down here to nothing. So I'll just hit none and it'll turn off that material. So real quick back in our first person blueprints character. There it is. We need to call 
this thing every so often. So the best way of doing that is we'll get up again, play events. I drag this over here. So if you don't already have it, you guys can write event begin play and get it. Uh, if you can't find it, you can do the same thing and it'll drag your camera to that spot. Um, and we're going to do a set timer by function name. I'm just going to grab our look at I'm gonna hit F2 copy paste that into the function name and I'm going to set this to point one and we're going to set the looping. So now every point one seconds, we're going to be seeing if there's anything that we can look at, quote unquote. So let me turn around. I right, look at that and you'll see the red on there for right now. That's because we still have the debug on it. But yeah, we have this nice little overlap thingy saying, hey, you can interact with this. It's a little much. So let's go back into that overlay. Uh, I am going to multiply this intensity here. Or the um, sorry, not that, not that one. I'm going to multiply this R value here by and honestly i think we could have actually just done the alpha nope alpha doesn't work we'll do the r all right um i'm gonna multiply it by 0.25 so basically we're just gonna lessen it maybe 0 0.35 0 0.4 let's go with 0.4 so it's really kind of making it um a little bit more opaque and then another thing we can multiply it by so hold m let's plug this in let's actually kind of give it a nice shiny edge here and to get that you can hold f oh what nope sorry you can't being dumb we can type right click and type fresnel you can plug that in to the edge or, sorry that's the emissive is what i'm wanting i am being dumb so that's opacity we want this on the edge but i'm going to plug our fresnel into the a and our multiply into the b here and we'll plug this into the emissive. And maybe our exponent. So that two, two works the best there. We have like a little bit brighter of an edge there. It'll be a little bit easier to see once we're in here edge is a little bit brighter and the middle is kind of cleared out as you can see okay I'm not the greatest at materials so if anybody knows a better way of doing that let me know all right I am going to turn off our debug now for both of these so none this is inside the character our line traces we have two of these so i'm also going to turn this one off and set it to none because now we have that overlay letting us know when we are looking at the stand cool and if i'm not mistaken i'm going to hit play on my test one more time Basically, you'll know that you can reach it because it lights up. But if it doesn't light up like that, then your thing's not reaching it. So if I back up slightly, I'm pressing F, it's not reaching. Cool. All right. Honestly, I think that's all we have time for in this video. If you guys like these shorter, I know this one's like 20 minutes long, so it's not that short but these decently shorter videos, let me know. Or if you'd rather me just do it all in like one or two videos, uh, also let me know in the comments below. Um, if you guys haven't already, uh, like, comment, subscribe. I wanna thank my patrons. I, again, I need to, I haven't stopped to look, go look at the Patreon to get the list of you guys. Um, I think I'm gonna put like some kind of credits in this. Hopefully I like figure that out in my editing um, and I'll put some kind of credits, but yeah. Thank you guys. See you in the next one.